It's a what? I'm going to talk today about this idea that the next big thing in technology often starts out looking like a toy. This is uh, based on an idea by Clay Christensen, who wrote a book called Innovator's Dilemma. The core idea that Christensen had is that imagine human needs are here, and humans don't change that much, and they, their needs are relatively constant, and technologies often start off undershooting what people want, and then being called toys because they seem like they're fun things that nerds use, but not something that serious people would use. But because of the way the technology gets better, they sneak up on you. A classic example is the telephone. Initially, in the 19th century, telegraphs were the dominant form of long distance communication used by the railroad industry and other people. So you would send business messages across the country. The telephone first came out, it could only go very short distances, the sound quality wasn't very good. People didn't really know why you'd want to talk on the phone when you could send all that information that people were sending through telegraphs. Western Union actually had the option to buy the patents for the telephone and turned it down. They said literally, this is a toy, our serious business customers don't need this thing. What they underestimated is that the telephone just got better and better. It was able to go longer distances, sound quality improved, people started using it for social and other kinds of use cases and it started to get some adoption in like little regional areas. Phone service expands and long distance rates drop dramatically. As more investment went into it, it got better and better, and eventually now we have this international, high-quality global communication system. It got so good that it, of course, displaced the telegraph. They said it couldn't be done. But it was. And then, of course, computers got microphones, and the internet connections got better, and broadband proliferated, and mobile phones proliferated, and messaging platforms like Skype are, are the dominant way that people communicate. An example from today is Bitcoin. People say, oh, it's a silly currency used by nerds. What they're underestimating is that there are probably on the order of 10,000 super excellent software developers who are building things in and around Bitcoin. You could, you could argue that Bitcoin is the largest software development organization in the world. It's moving very, very rapidly. Another good example is virtual reality. Today, if you want like a high-end device like a Vive or an Oculus, you have to have a PC, kind of expensive, they look funny on your head, this nerdy thing, but there's all sorts of really smart people and lots of money going into making these things better and really over the course of the last year the price has basically dropped in half, that will continue. It's very easy to, to see it go on this path where these things become lightweight and inexpensive. There's all these software developers figuring out new ways to use it and building cool apps. Just like when you go back and you look at the Apple II in 1977, it was like $5,000 and what would you do with it? Someone came along and they invented the spreadsheet and the word processor and all these sorts of other great things and the price came down, you know, PCs then proliferated. There are some things that are just simply like that, that in the technology world that are simply toys and never become better. But there are lots of very powerful forces, including smart developers working on things, semiconductors get faster and networks get better and software improves and things like this that, that drive these technologies upwards. And so it's always a good idea when you hear people dismiss things as toys to think very carefully about kind of what trajectory that technology is following. You have to look at those forces and map the trajectory to predict where it's gonna go over the next couple of years. Look for things that might be here today, but in let's say three to 10 years, we'll be up here.